Welcome to yet another episode of Light of the World. My name is Chico Renclay. I am happy to welcome you to this program. Anyway, everything in life teaches us this very simple truth. Nothing is for free. In life, you get what you earn. You get what you work for. You only get what you pay for. Thou shalt not steal. Amen. There is nothing wrong with that. But to many people, the way we relate to our salary, the way we relate to our possession, is somehow how we try to relate to God. But God do not relate to us on the basis of our hard work. God relates to us on the basis of His grace. And today, the topic I have chosen is grace. So, what is grace? Grace in Greek is kari. And for by grace means kariti. And I'm going to read a scripture here from Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God. Before I go on, I would just like to inform you that I will be doing a lot of reading from my uh, paper here. And so if I'm not focused on you, please do understand. Thank you. For it is by grace... There is no doubt, grace is from God. It is the gift of God. There is no argument. We cannot argue because grace is shown by God toward us. It is also said here, through faith, and this is not from yourselves. And I always thought that faith was mine. I always thought that faith was something I could call my own. And I'm pretty sure there are a lot of people out there who thinks the same way. But this faith is also not of ourselves, but it is a gift of God. It is so clearly written here. And this is not from yourselves, it is the gift of God. By grace, like I said, in Greek is kariti. And I thought that grace meant um, grace was a state of being pitiful towards others and to be compassionate towards fellow men. And, but this is not entirely wrong, but it, that grace is much deeper than just being pitiful, being compassionate or being sympathetic. Grace is much deeper. I'm not saying that God is not merciful. His mercies are new every day. Amen. And Jesus was moved by compassion when he healed the sick. Okay. And so grace is a little bit deeper than <clears throat> just being pitiful, compassionate, and being sympathetic. Grace is in Greek, undeserved favor. Amen. Undeserved. Okay. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, we have just read that. But if we continue reading uh, verse 9. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God. In verse 9 it says, Not by works, so that no man can boast. In James chapter 4, verse 6, we find this. But he gives more grace. Therefore he says... In the Old Testament, God resists the poor, but gives grace to the humble. Amen. And I'm pretty sure you have heard of the uh, parable Jesus uh, taught <clears throat> in, uh, in the New Testament. Jesus was talking about uh, the prayer of a Pharisee and a tax collector. The Pharisee was very boastful about what he did. He said he paid tithe for everything he possessed and he had been good. He fasts for two times every week. But the tax collector, he would not even raise his hands, his, his face. He looked down to the floor and says to God in a prayer, I am unworthy. But Jesus 
commented on the tax collector, the humble. In the same way, you will find what Jesus meant in Psalms 138 verse 6, Proverbs 3:34, as you can see on the screen, Proverbs 20, uh, 29, 23, Matthew chapter 23 verse 12, Luke chapter 1 and verse 52, and in 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 5. You will find how being boastful and being proud is resisted by God Himself. But like I said, the tax collector was exalted by Jesus because he was humble. God wants to exalt us. God wants to lift us up. That is why this salvation has no part. I mean, this salvation has no works on our, our, on our part, on our end. It is all done by God through Jesus on the cross and through his resurrection so that we will not be able to boast. In Luke 18, chapter 9, verse 14, you will read about the Pharisee and the tax collector I was talking about. Exalted means to be glorified. Jesus glorifies the humble. God glorifies the humble. And let me tell you this, grace is not just the forgiving of sins. It's also the forgetting of sins, which enables us to boldly come into the presence of God. In Isaiah 43, verse 25, we find this. This is spoken by God himself to his prof prophet Isaiah. I, I am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake and I will not remember your sins. Hallelujah. Amen. And in Hebrews chapter 8, verse 12, we find this, For I will be merciful toward their iniquities, and I will remember their sins no more. Praise God. What if God remembers our sins? Who would be worthy of coming into His presence? I have a story here which I would like to share with you. I'm going to read from the paper. I hope you don't mind. This is a story <clears throat> and uh, an event that took place between Charles Spurgeon and Joseph Parker. They both had churches in London in the 19th century. On one occasion, Parker commented on the poor condition of children admitted to Spurgeon's orphanage. Okay, Parker commented on the poor condition of the children uh, admitted to Spurgeon's orphanage. It was reported to Spurgeon, however, that Parker had criticized the orphanage itself, not the condition of the children, but the orphanage itself. Spurgeon blasted Parker the next week from the pulpit. The attack was printed in the newspapers and became the talk of the town. People flocked to Parker's church the next Sunday to hear his rebuttal, to hear what he had to say. I understand Dr. Spurgeon is not in his pulpit today. And this is the Sunday they used to take an offering for the orphanage. I suggest we take a love offering here instead. That's what Parker said about Dr. Spurgeon. The crowd was delighted. The ushers had to empty the collection plates three times. Later that week, there was a knock at Parker's office. It was Spurgeon. And Spurgeon said to him, You know Parker? You have practiced grace on me. You have given me not what I deserved. You have given me what I needed. That is what grace means. We are given not because we deserve it, not, beca not because we want it, but because we need it. And I have a quote here. 
which I would like to read again. Grace and faith are both from God. Grace is done by God. Faith is a gift from God. Grace is the love of God in action. Faith is a gift from God to see this action. Grace cannot be activated by us. It had already been done by God. Faith is activated by us as we accept it as a gift of God. Faith is a choice. It's been given, but it works only if accepted. Faith has no value without grace because grace is upon which faith is based. Grace is the foundation of faith. Faith is accepted so we can be saved by grace. And Jesus in action is grace. If grace was a person, grace in person is Jesus. Thank you for tuning in again. Hope to see you next time. Thank you so much. God bless you.